Hello, we're back uh, for this afternoon on the, the, the track about the new API stack for Open Finance. Uh, so we will have uh, four speakers in that track uh, who will tell us a little bit about what's currently new, about the, the mindset the, and the technologies that we can use uh, for that. We'll talk about how to unleash your potential of API program. We'll talk about event-driven APIs. We will talk about API strategy for open banking. And we'll talk about real-time data uh, in all that track. And to start, we will have a Liad, uh, Liad Bukowski uh, who will tell us about how to unleash the potential of your API program. So let's have Liad come. Hello, how are you? Very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a great start to have you for this afternoon. And let's, uh, yeah, your full screen, the stage is yours for 20 minutes. And we'll be Thank back. You very for much, Excellent. Well, cool. Well, Hi, everyone, and good afternoon. Um, my name is Liad Bukowski, and uh, I head the solution engineering team uh, here at uh, Axel UK. Uh, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about, about your API program, uh, API programs in general, maybe. I think we are here, uh, virtually here, in uh, at the API Days event uh, for, for London. And, and it, we're here because we all have some kind of a strategy around, uh, around APIs. But, but but we have to really look at it a little bit differently because I think that if we, if we let's face it, I mean, our strategy today is probably significantly different than it was a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, we had a, a crazy few months and, uh, and we've all changed, both as individuals and, uh, and from a globalization perspective as well. And our habits change. I mean, the way that we consume uh, media and television uh, uh, and the, the way that we actually take our music and how we purchase things. Amazon is now one of the biggest grocery shops in, in the UK. And, and the way that we engage Zoom, that was like a, a almost like an, an unknown, like a, a, a fringe application, now it becomes like took center stage, became a, a big a, a business tool, and at the same time, a great tool to actually engage with, like, or communicate with families that are that live far away. The way that we do we a, a health, or like you know, a fitness programs. And everything just started like, Changing because we became less and less, it became less and less in person. But more importantly, these are the big players, of course. I mean, I can I can tell you about experiences about how I actually hired someone with never even meeting him just through LinkedIn and through interactions and everything. But these are like the technology was there for us to use. We just never really took that 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 step forward. But now we have so many other small organizations that actually had to adapt really quickly. That adoption happened rapidly in the first months of two thousand. And companies that actually started like implementing things, they may have thought that it's going to just like news. They need to do something very quickly, but in fact, a lot of the change is actually something that stayed with them for you know 12, 18 months afterwards. And maybe now they're revisiting how it's going to look like going to the next two, three years. But it's not it's not new. I mean, historically, digital platforms have been outperforming um, the, the retail uh, growth, as, um, you know, by a factor of about three x. It's just that recently it just went went a little bit crazy, and the nine x factor is actually is affecting everyone because it actually shows that even businesses that historically uh, used to be only retail or, or like more in person now they're trying to figure out how they can actually change the experience that they provide to the consumers, and of course digital platforms and digital solutions are actually taking center stage of that. Let me talk for a second about just an example about one of our customers, a serious XM. They are uh, a digital radio in the United States, but but what they did is was was they, they just they didn't just provide digital radio for consumers for their members. They actually figured out how they can actually improve their experiences by integrating with other companies such as EMI and Warner Music, and all that through different APIs. And after that, they figured, okay, we need to to enhance our distribution mechanism, and effectively, uh, cars like for you know more more specifically Tesla, for example. Will be able to automatically integrate with with the Sirius XM and, and take advantage of all these experiences and the community providers that they that they've actually partnered with. But Sirius XM actually did not just stop there. They, what they they figured is that we can actually take it one step further and become almost like a like a point of sale system, where by integrating with companies like PayPal, in looking at into the future, we're going to have a a a, 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 a 
cars that will need to actually pay for tolls, maybe pay for charging stations, and you will need that integration built in automatically into your system. But but is it for everyone? I mean, is, is your API program ready for, for what is ahead? Do, do you actually, uh, are you looking at building an ecosystem? Uh, are you looking at being part of someone else's ecosystem, perhaps? Uh, and, and more importantly, do you want to make that decision today? Because, I mean, obviously, you, you want to be future-proof, but you don't necessarily want to commit to anything so early. Let's, let's go back in time a little bit. I mean, you, you've done everything right. I mean, you built your API program. You've attended all these API Days events, and uh, you've figured out exactly how you want to create your APIs and how to, you have to document, document them and model them and everything around that. That's great. Out of the way. You figured out how to control it as well. You build that secure mechanism around it. You deployed it in the cloud, not on-premise. You build the scalability around it. You, you figured that one out as well. You probably bought a, a, like an API management solution as well to handle it well. And then, of course, everything around the, the consumption. You built your community. You published it. And you have a way for consumers to actually go and test. So it's, it's, it sounds, sounds, really, sounds great, right? But, but the world is changing, and, and your company is also changing. I hope that it's being successful, and I hope that it actually recovered really well from, from that dip of last year, and it actually came out of it stronger. But what it means, it means that the reality changed. If historically you had two development teams working on about 10 different APIs and then affecting a few different applications, and they're all in the same building, they all can communicate and interact with one another regularly. Now you have five development teams working on maybe 100 APIs, and have like quite a few different applications that they affect. And these development teams, you know, they, they might still be in the same building. They might still maybe work remotely. Maybe it's in the same country. But maybe not. Maybe you actually have about 10 development teams now because everyone can work remotely and can work from different locations. Perhaps you figured out that it makes sense to actually get an external development team to outsource some of your functionality. You have multiple different geographies and many different APIs that now you need to manage. It could be through acquisition, it could be through mergers. But more importantly, it's because you need to adapt to a new world. More integration points, more solutions that need to fit into, uh, uh, that you need to fit into, and they need to perhaps integrate with you. And the number and the scale of the applications increase exponentially as well. Now we're talking about applications that are internal, in the cloud, mobile, IoT, there's so many different things. And this gives, but like, provide like, a, of, like a, uh, it brings new challenges to, to the enterprises. When your producers are, are coming from all, everywhere, from applications and services and business processes, um, and, and come from different clouds, different geographies. And then you have consumers that come from everywhere as well. I mean, there will be, uh, you know, mobile phone devices or, or IoT, or like uh, anything that's about integration with other third-party ecosystems. It could be a, an existing partner, or it can be someone that just wants to work with you. But you need to still provide them that functionality. And if you see all these like, logos and all these brands on, on, on the screen, I mean, I'm sure you can recognize some of them. And I'm 100% confident that you have more than one in your organization at the moment. Just, just because just the way that, that enterprises actually scale up. And all of this, and all the integrations that these companies offer, and all the automation that they offer, it means that you have a higher operational complexity associated with, with, with that growth. And there's no real way to govern all of that. And something that you built in order to encourage uh, innovation and collaboration is now actually impeding it because, because it's too complicated to manage all of this, all these, these, point, these points, these integration sections and these APIs. You know, if we, if we were face-to-face uh, -face right now, I'll probably do some kind of a show of hands and ask you guys to, to raise your hand and tell me how many API management systems you have in your platform, in, in your organizations today. And, and I'm 100% confident that quite a few of you are going to raise their hand saying that they have more than two. Uh, this is effectively a trend. It's because that complexity that introduced as, as, um, to, to, channel, to, to the enterprises is effectively making us work slightly in a different way. The work is a bit more siloed. We have more and more organizational development teams that work in different places. We have different requirements in different regions, whether it's uh, driven by regulation, perhaps it's driven by, uh, by a, a business demands, or maybe even by con consumer experience expectations. But all of these, 
by showing us again that what what are the issues and the, and the issues of these challenges are, are like I mean they they come in many different shapes of form but we'll focus on a few of them. So for example, a, a duplication of APIs and unused resources. B BNP Paribas, one of the actual customers, saved about ten thousand uh, uh, euros per API per month, and they had many many of these APIs. And this cost come just by introducing a way to actually consolidate these APIs or identify what duplications they have. So then that, of course, it saves you money. It saves you money on, on the testing, on the development, on the QA, not just on the infrastructure of where you need to, de to, to deploy it. It's just about how you actually manage it on a daily basis. And of course, when you have all these uh, inconsistent experiences or, or uh, um, non-standard security policies that are actually enforced in different gateways, when you have all of these uh, 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 non-standard deployments, it, may, it leads to, to uh, uh, challenge and slowness when you actually think about how do you actually transform an edge and become an, or stay an agile business. And the costs are, are standard. I mean, it's like, I mean, we look at it as a, from an obstacle perspective, if you're looking at opening everything, I mean, why would you even look in, in that direction? Um, from an, an IT point of view, uh, this is all about, uh, we have a lot of legacy systems. Uh, historically, uh, quite, quite not, not a lot of vendor locking. If you buy one, you kind of need to keep on buying the same, the same platform, same, same gateway potentially. Um, and all, all the solutions are very much tailored to what is needed. So, so the idea is to how do you can actually go and and, and encourage reusability by by by, by make, maybe like a in, in enforcing like a slightly different architecture, one that is designed around microservices, more agile. Security is, is still still there; it has to be there. But the idea is that you will be driving for efficiency rather for than for for robustness. When we look at the at the um, the, the, the the risk around it, we always have the same risk, which is like around the, the threat and the data privacy regulation compliance, everything that uh, that is associated with with data. And and when you're looking for an open platform again you're not looking to, it doesn't mean that the data will just be accessible to everyone. It means that there will be a, a secure access to that open data, something that will encourage innovation, but at the same time will, will enforce regulatory compliance and standards. So corporate co-creation will definitely be center stage, but it will not be instead of the, the security. Um, and the next step, of course, is, that, is, is about the customer. Customer drive things as well. It's really easy in today's world. I mean, we, are, we love shiny things and things change all the time. It's really easy to, to move away from a, a, one a, a technology, one design to another, to another. We expect it to improve, to, to, to be different, to be better. Something that was a, um, popular two years ago, a design that was popular two, three years ago, today looks dated. But how can you actually adopt that and change it and improve your customer experience? And a lot of it you can do by, by of course, by building these new, new journeys, but also by working with your, with your partners to, to introduce them into an ecosystem, creating an experience to your users that is not just your experience, is actually something that is tied between you and other partners. And that's how you differentiate yourself by creating these unique journeys. And growth. I mean, the, the, the slow innovation, which is a, a, a you know, like an issue, um, and the, the idea of like you know, you, how do you actually like keep on growing your community and, and maybe tap into new distribution? Creating that that marketplace, a place where uh, your consumers, your partners, can actually go and, and read about your your uh, services and your partners as well, so they can actually tap into or, or log into or use your partner services as well as your, your solutions. That means that you immediately actually get a, a, to, to explore new revenue streams by, by introducing these new technologies. But at the same time, you tap into that community that your partners already built. That whole economy, is, the network economy will actually be produced both to you and your partners completely new revenue streams. So what do they do? They built it. A lot of them just built it themselves. Um, I mean, I was on a, on a call, uh, on, on an event a few, a few months ago, 
And I heard it to uh, Lloyds Bank in the UK. I believe that they shared that they, they actually built it. They went and they said, we, we need this. We need a way to govern all the different API management solutions we have. We need a way to create some kind of a marketplace out, out there to our consumers, to our partners. And they went and they spent, you know, I'm assuming a lot of time and, and a lot of money on actually building something like that. Because this is a necessity. And even if you don't see it necessarily today as an organization, if you are like heading down that route of multiple different API management system, the question of governance, the question of co-creation, the question of marketplaces, and how do you monetize it and expose it properly, they will come your way. So how do we fit into this? Um, um, Axway uh, is, is offering a, a platform that uh, is effectively, it's, it's a management plane that will sit on top of any uh, API management or API solution you have. In most cases, it will be, of course, uh, the API, API gateway that, uh, that Axway offers. But it can also integrate with uh, the likes of uh, AWS and Azure and, and maybe some of that, you know, like a Layer 7 or NeoSoft or even Apigee. In fact, some we, we offer it as, a, as an SDK, the, that integration agent. So some of our partners, like uh, Solus, actually went and built their own agent to integrate with our Amplify platform. And what you effectively have is, is, a, is a system that will allow you to manage your ecosystems, your environments, various different policies, but also aggregate all the analytics from all these API management platforms, and not just API management, but also from repositories such as GitHub and Swagger Hub, and get it all uploaded into your um, um, uh, in this, in basically in one aggregated location where you can also see and all the assets that are exposed by by these devices, by these by these gateways. So when uh, AWS is uh, uh, is exposing like five ten APIs and Azure as well, you will be able to see. You will be able to see the source. You will be able to see that. But it's not going to be exposed in one way because it's you still need to uh, uh, figure out exactly for, you know from uh, you know whether it is on the, what cloud it is. It will integrate with that, of course. It will run with that. It will still enforce the security level. And of course, the digital uh, dashboard that you get from the, uh, from uh, uh, analytics. And the marketplace itself will still be tailored for the consumer. So if you're creating a marketplace that is for, for uh, or if I, I log in as a partner, or I log in as, a, as an end user, or as an internal developer, I will see a different set of, uh, of APIs or services exposed to me. As an internal developer, I will have access, for example, for my repositories or for other repositories. So when they update, they will trigger some kind of a CICD process around it. And as a, as a, as a partner, I will have access to that particular uh, um, uh, services that are relevant to me and to our partnership. The idea that, uh, I mean, creating that, it's, it's just a simple idea, but the marketplace, that catalog of information that you can actually expose, it's great because it really gives you the ability to actually partner with the right people that you want, or at least get them to onboard to the services that you offer automatically and in a simple way. In fact, all of these uh, integration flows or, or subscription flows are completely customizable. So you can decide how you want to handle every time someone uploads or, 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 um, up, or everyone subscribes to an API or wants to start co-create an API with you. And of course, once all these assets have been aggregated from all the different cloud systems and all the different uh, uh, gateways that you have and all the different repositories, you can start packaging them, creating different products, creating different tools, attaching different life cycles to these products, attach terms and conditions and support documentation, of course. And then something that was uh, as complex as uh, all the geographies and all the different uh, uh, you know, on-premise and off -on -on in cloud and multiple hundreds of APIs multiple different applications, all of that is translated into, into just a repository, a marketplace, a place where people can uh, discover, uh, get informed, get acknowledged, and educate themselves about the different services that you're exposed. And I want to be very, very clear. These are not just API services. You can actually import and expose other things there as well. So as long as it has some kind of a, an interface, you can probably expose it there. But of course, Automatically, it works with all the gateways and the repositories straight out of the game. 
And we talked a little bit about what BNP did, but you know what? This is something that uh, the the value of the companies of 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 implementing something like that. Companies see that all the time. Just the idea that there is one uh, source of truth of a catalog of all the different services that are within an organization. That is already something that is uh, is is quite unique, and there's no more of that issue of that uh, fragmentation when you have uh, some uh, um, uh, APIs that have been created in, uh, in the United States, some have been created in Europe, and some have been created. In, the, in in Australia, for example, and it's just the same bank, but because they worked on it in such a style of approach, now they have duplications around it. A company like a, like a Permata Bank, for example, which is an interesting story because they were like a there were four they actually f- a merger of five different banks, and they came back and they 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 found that there's so much legacy systems as they wanted to start offering new solutions. What they did was uh, was one of course they they, they needed to transform themselves to, to a more API-centric organization. But after that, they exposed all these APIs and enabled other small fintechs in Indonesia to actually start using it, opening them into a market of 150 million people. They showed, they showed immediately, very quickly, uh, increased growth in, in customer acquisition and in the transaction volume. I think... The key thing here is that a lot of us, we, we made it, a, a lot of companies or enterprises made a significant investment in, a, um, in a solutions that will help them manage all their assets and all their integration points already. And in many cases, when, they, when you come across and you start thinking about how do I, what do I do next, what, what else can I do? If you look at a, a lot of these the, the marketplaces approaches are very much siloed. They kind of, you, you need to use the same technology and the same uh, gateways all over the place in order to use it. Uh, we don't think that um, companies are actually like excited about something like that. that. The concept of a rip and replace is not not great. And at the same time, you will always have the uh, room for companies to start using something like AWS or Azure, whatever it is for uh, production, or maybe it is just for development iteration. But you still have to be able to enforce your governance and your controls and your security policies on those gateways. What Axway offers is a, is effectively it's, a, it's just a solution for that. It's a kind of like a, trying to get you or remove a lot of that that operational complexity that we talked about earlier and things that you, you probably experience, and give you a, a platform that will easily connect your different providers, your con- and your consumers, and at the same time let you maximize your existing investment in your in your API management solution or in your event systems, or in your uh, integration with repositories, or in your, how you actually work with your teams. And you can make them more efficient so they will be made aware about all the changes that are happening in real time. And at the same time, of course, that's, that's the ability to publish it to potential consumers in the future or, or to, or to uh, potential partners. That is just to uh, increase the uh, revenue and building it, all the monetization around that of course, will give you the ability to actually turn it into a, a, a product and build a business case around it and not just something that would be a, a solution to simplify operations uh, or you know, DevOps or operations uh, complexities. So um, that is uh, from us, from Axway. And uh, thank you very much for your time. I think uh, this is my, my 20, almost 25 minutes. And that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Do we have the time for one question? Uh, you know, in um, in in many organization about you know API program governance, some teams have started with an API management provider, some teams have started with another one, and there is always this big discussion about okay, what will be the group solution, and that goes into RFPs and to and to frustration because at some point some teams will have started with a solution that will at some point disappear. Are you yeah. saying that with this open governance framework model platform? You are able to manage, like, uh, let's say, uh, the scale of the program internally, but not frustrating teams to remove to have the obligation to remove the, all the work they have done on whatever provider. Completely. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, as a developer, you 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 come with your, you know, you you have your IDE, you have your uh, your the platform that you like to work with. You like you have your chair, you have your mouse, you have your computer, you have your environment. Usually, you will bring a lot of the technology with you. 
you like to work with uh, uh, Azure API management and you like to work with uh, uh, GitHub, for example, for a repository. But maybe as an organization, you already standardized on something else. Maybe you may have standardized on, on Apigee, you may have standardized on Xway, you may have standardized on MuleSoft. Uh, and, and perhaps through acquisitions, you suddenly find yourself in a position where you have, again, another API management introduced into the mix. Sometimes a change is, is needed. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not. I mean, sometimes it, it, you know, a solution does not fit. But in many, many cases, you want to be at the right time, at the right place to actually make that decision. You don't want to be forced into it. And more importantly, you want to allow those teams, those remote teams or those local teams even, the flexibility to make the decision for them. They can be autonomous. They can be a much more agile and much more efficient if they can work with the tools and, and services that they are used to. And that I think that's... Also, after bring your, own, bring your own device, it's like bring your own stack mm -hmm. <laughs> at some point, right? Pretty much, but 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 again, when you bring your own, when you brought your own device, you still have to put that MDM software on it, right? Yeah. So when you bring your own uh, API management, you still need to have that security layer on top of it. You still need to have that governance control to make sure that your company as an enterprise is not exposed to to any other risk. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah, that was that was a great presentation. Thank you very much, and uh, for everyone interested into like this. New open governance model enabled by uh, what Light was pre presenting. You can reach him or reach Axway directly on the expo booth. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we